um, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted, I'm, I'm enchanted because I love the house. It's brilliant. Oh, uh, good. And I especially like to talk to you because you already had a career of being an actress, a performer, director, whatever. And then out of a sudden, you went <laughs> into animation. Why? Tell me, why? <laughs> Well, it's a good story. I think I just see it as a very natural evolution of my sort of storytelling journey, you know. But um, yeah, I I think I'd always so I started out as an actor, and then I'd always been interested in working behind the camera. So I started making some shorts, live action shorts with sort of actor friends or whatever, and then. I think I developed slightly longer things and and hand in hand with that I always really loved making things and it just sort of felt like it was the right time to try something different and I was very interested in animation so I did this crazy thing which is I went back to film school to study animation um, which was completely out of my comfort zone in some ways but actually in other ways it was completely um uh, you know has huge overlaps because it's it is just a different form of storytelling and and I think what I discovered was that all the things I'd done up to that point fed into animation so the acting was actually really helpful because you're having to create your actors out of nothing um, and I was always interested in telling slightly perhaps uh, stories with a slightly magical or surprising element and animation lends itself to that and you can be a little bit um, playful. So I found that I was, I, I, I'd found where I wanted to be and everything I'd done up to that point fed into it. So I feel really lucky because I'm now, I'm now I feel like I'm a very comfortable filmmaker. You can kind of throw pretty much anything at me and and I'll just say well that story needs this or it needs the live action element or or it's a stop motion or it's a 2d you know it's I think the the story dictates the medium that's what I feel but um, uh, um how do I put that um I think Fyodor Kitrok a Russian animator once said an animator is a lesser god because mm. you create everything Yes, well, it's true. When I, it's true. When I started out trying things out, that's what I found. It was slightly out of, you know, frustration of not being on a film set. And so I'd make my own film set. I'd do it right here. I'd do it, you know, I'd, I'd make my puppet, I'd voice the puppet, I'd shoot the thing. And, you know, so it, it does give you all this power and control, uh, which as creatives, we are, you know, often, often it's frustrating because you're waiting. So it gives you an instant outlet, I think. But you you have to start with a blank page. Uh, you have to uh, create something from nothing. Uh, and and uh, that's the other thing. You you have practically yes. come up with everything. And I find that. <laughs> well, that's what's so exciting about it. Because you can take you can take it practically anywhere within you know within budgetary reason. Um, I can. I was just in the. It's it's. I, I love that I'm in a place where I can go to the British Museum just recently, and I went and I saw some exhibition on Peru, and these characters were just popping out at me from the cabinets. You know, you're thinking that needs to speak, like that yeah. needs to have a life. How can I give that a life somewhere? Yeah. So would you say you, would, you start with character or would you say you start with story? Uh, I think I start with story, but character's very important to it. Character's crucial to it. So I think, I, I really think narrative and structure is very important, but at the heart of it, in the end, story and situation can be, uh, impeccable but if you don't care about the character for me um, it leaves me cold so I, I need to feel something about a character yeah um, what's your personal approach to do animation 
what makes me feel this is a film by you done mm. in any mm. I think it might be two things one is tone so I do think that one thing I've learned about myself is I have a particular tone and I think that's something to do with uh, absurd hu uh, it's it's humor and it's absurdity um, and it's warm so I like I like warmth um, and I like being a bit silly, but also underlying it, underlying it, I, I do like there to be, if possible, um, and not, I'm, I, I say this carefully because a larger message is what I want to say, but I, I feel slightly uncomfortable about saying message because it feels like I'm trying to sort of get on a pulpit and preach. I don't preach, I don't like to preach, but it's, it's about saying something which is bigger than the small story. So um, it, it's something universal that might be applied to many situations or many people. Um, yeah. So Does you that are help? doing, it, uh, pardon me, you are doing it from a highly personal point of view. Yeah, yes, yes. So who's your, who's your target audience? I would say it's as inclusive as possible without, I think it's probably not too young. My target audience, because I like dialogue. And so, you know, if you, I think it's probably, uh, I, I like to be quite inclusive, a family audience perhaps, but I also think it might then verge towards adult a little. I think it just depends on the story I'm trying to tell. Um, but I, I'm a fan of a family audience because I'm a parent and I like to be able to watch things with my kids, which they like to, and I can enjoy. And this is, this, I mean, the house is slightly more adult perhaps, but, but I think to be able to watch something where you can watch it with an age that's a bit, you know, um, a child that's not necessarily too young, but that you can both enjoy it and you can both enjoy the jokes and it's maybe pushing those jokes or the boundaries or the references a little bit. I think as an inclusive an audience as possible is my sort of target. I like, I like quite a broad audience, I suppose. Yeah. How did you get on board? How did you get involved with the production of the house? Well, I was Nexus, so Charlotte Bavasso at Nexus had a very sort of brilliant idea, which was what would happen if we got three stop motion filmmakers together or three sets, because there's Mark and Emma as one, and, and got them in a room and maybe brainstormed. I think because they felt that we had some things in common. So uh, the humor and the slight darkness that we like uh, find attractive. And, and so I was asked if, if, that would be something of interest and of course I said yes because I'm a huge fan of both those filmmakers or three of those filmmakers and um and then they got us in a room and we brainstormed which all these things are things that one never really gets to do you never get to be this close to another filmmaker and see their process um and that's been a complete privilege and something something really special uh because because we could still make our own films, but you could also see the insights of the others and um, their, their perspective, which is just such a refreshing thing to be able to do and work alongside. Yeah, so that's how I was brought in, was as part of a, I guess a team. Curve. Sorry? You had, you had your own learning curve while making uh, the house. Was it, oh, yes. was, it was it difficult to get on the same page in the beginning? Um, it was oddly quite easy for us to get on the same because all we needed to do was come up with, with a concept that we were all three happy with. And, and I think because we're, we're, we're pretty collaborative people, we, we just sort of would listen. And, and then and actually when we arrived at the house, it made, seemed to make so much sense because it's a space which can be applied to different situations different characters different timelines um yeah. so so it made complete sense 
Uh, and then from that point, then, then I guess we were coming up with our own concepts and there was a bit of adjustment perhaps with thinking, well, how do they sit together? And, you know, I ended up being the future and Nikki is more the present and Mark and Emma are more the past, but that wasn't prescribed. It was just something that evolved. So it felt quite, it felt quite organic actually. So uh, you, you, even if you had to work together, you had a big freedom in doing what you wanted. Yes. Um, yes. How, how do I put that? Um, that's not very often, hap that's not happening very often. No, it's quite rare. And um, it's quite rare and, and unique. And I think it's a credit to Netflix that they came on board so quickly and so readily that they they were really on board with us. You know, they knew what kinds of films we made. And this was a very sort of unusual project. And they really were supportive of that. And I think that's so refreshing. And I think we need more of that. Um, because I think then what, what you get at the end of it, not, I, I do think people need to, you know, filmmakers or creatives need to, you know, take a bit of, um, be, be aware of, of what you're creating and it's a product and there's an audience and well, I, I feel that way, you know, I'm always aware of what, what the audience will be feeling and so on. But, but, but if you're allowed to be playful and experimental, then actually what you can end up with is something really refreshing. Um, and it just takes finances to to take a risk to to allow that to happen and then i think we're we're in a more interesting place culturally i'm totally agree more more <laughs> more. more exactly more. <laughs> um who came up with the idea of doing a horror and anthology do you know it wasn't really uh, we didn't we didn't come up with we didn't say it was going to be any genre actually we didn't say this was going to be horror uh they were just sort of dark comic stories yeah and and so i guess one could put it in a horror genre but i don't i don't know if i would necessarily bill it as a straight horror it's a sort of playful dark comedy which has unsettling aspects I think it, it's all about how unusual it is, really. Yeah. Well, okay, okay, that's a mild way to put it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, 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 did you do some research? I immediately thought of Dead of Night, a uh, 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 British uh, horror film from 1940. There okay. Were, uh, um, there, uh, um, is this a tradition to do that in Great Britain? That's um, do you mean horror? Yeah, comedic horror. Uh, comedic tale. horror. Uh, I think I think comedy. I think comedy has huge overlaps in horror generally. Um, you know, and and that can be taken into sort of spoof territory in in terms of the scream films or something like that. But but actually, I think I think you can. I think it doesn't take much in horror to push it into silliness for me. Yeah, you know, yeah, of course. Uh, it, it's it's quite a fine line, which is quite a delightful line to be treading, because then you can that that playfulness you can use in all sorts of. And Mark and Emma's film, you know, uses it in they they're sort of they're using a sort of gothic horror, but you can put. In, but then you're in a sort of absurd puppet sort of land, and there's something very unique and playful that you can do with with those genre tropes. I think probably mine is a little bit gentler. You know, it has a, more of a gentle quality, um, but you still have that, that there are certain elements within it that feel that you've got an impending thing coming in on you, the mist and the darkness, and it's ominous, an ominous quality, which is unsettling. Uh, when, when you started thinking about the story, was Corona already a thing? No. <laughs> no, no, okay. we, hit, we hit COVID in pre-production, which changed everything in the sense of how we were working. We were all due to be working in the studio, going in together when we were in pre-production, designing, the production designer had a space, the editor had a space, everybody, and then everything turned into home, uh, home spaces. So it was, 
it was quite brutal, but we we did a, an amazing job of of running this whole pre-production period remotely. Yeah. We're very proud of ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, 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 we are running out of time, but I have, um, how do you, a quick teaching question. How do you yeah. manage to bring the natural enemies of an animator are time and budget. Uh, how do you manage to get your story, your characters, uh, 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 alongside time and budget available to you doing the story? Be decisive and be ruthless. Be ruthless oh. with your story. Be decisive. Don't don't procrastinate. Just gonna go. You know, think about it, but then go. Well, okay, we need to make a decision, and that's going to be better. Either I might I might not be able to have that scene or that prop or that shot uh, because I want to have this this long tracking shot, and that losing that scene will buy me the tracking shot. And do I lose anything from the story? Probably not. It's just a little cream on the cake that I can do without. And so be ruthless. And you know, it's like that. You know, kill your babies, as it were. It's it's <laughs> it's. Um, I think that's the only way. Uh, really focus on what fights are worth fighting, and and what what's really important for you in your story and for your characters. What do you think will change animation more, uh, uh, Corona or the streaming services? Ah. Oh. Oh, well, I think I think the streaming services can play a huge role for animation. I think COVID has been quite interesting because animation has been quite healthy. So actually, it's been, it's been allowed to harder with stop motion. But even so, it still has benefits. You know, um, people are more um, removed from each other behind curtains. And so it's it's slightly easier to run that in, in a COVID situation. But um, I think if the streaming services are brave and um, and bold, then I think they could they could help to bring animation to audiences that wouldn't have initially thought they would respond. And I think that's very exciting. Yeah. I can't let you go without asking about your future projects. Okay. I, I... I read something about uh, 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 you are interested in doing something about Frida Kahlo. And, yes, uh, I have her some... right here. That's what I'm writing at the moment. Oh. <laughs> it's <laughs> is a, a Frida Kahlo script. Um, I'm working with Lupus Films on that and the BFI. Um, and then I have uh, quite a few other things in development uh, with different companies at different stages uh, and they are all animation but there's all slightly different some a couple of stop motion and a couple of 2d um are you still working together with your husband yes on a certain project i would like to uh, uh mention here toy maker secret oh uh, well uh, we would love that project to happen it didn't happen it ended up not happening but I don't think that, I, d I think there could be a, a space for that in the future. But I'm working with him on something else, on a different project, which hasn't been talked about yet, but we've been talked, to, we've been working together on something else. So that's good. I, I was very interested because um, um, there's a aspect of family in producing a film, uh, your team, uh, your, 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 your trustees, um, but what happens if you come home and you, you're still talking about a show, a production, a film, uh, and it's never stopping? Yeah, you just get good at it. You get good at drawing those lines and saying, you know, we're home now. We don't, you know, we only need to talk about it when we need to talk about it. I think you just get good at it. It's quite easy. Yeah. Is it possible you, you have to work on getting on the same page there too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you have to say, you know what, I don't want to talk about that right now. Like, let's do it in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think you are one of the most luckiest person I ever met. Yeah, uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, I, I, 
um, have a close look what you do next, and I'm congratulating to the house, which is terrific. Uh, uh, thank you very, very much. Thank you time. so much. Thanks for your time. Thanks. <laughs>